the Lord, everybody. We're so glad that you decided to come to the house of God tonight. If you would, would you stand with us? We're going to sing a couple of songs and just worship the Lord with us, however that you feel comfortable in this place tonight.
take our needs before the Lord tonight. If you have anything that you would like to mention before we read the needs on the screen, you can go ahead and do that at this time. <coughs> Just, uh, can we pray for my friend? Uh, her name's Kendra Davis. She's in the hospital overnight right now on oxygen. Um, she's pretty sick. She's facing <coughs> possible homelessness and going through a lot of things, so her and her daughters really need prayer. Remember uh, Sister Emily tonight. She's not feeling well. Brother Scott um, also mom and dad are having some problems with the vehicle. So, and Brother Virgil Pulliam also sick tonight. Yeah. Uh, be praying for me because Christmas and Thanksgiving <coughs> is hard on me because I lost my dad. So I just want to say thank you for your prayers for my mom. They did a surgery and they got his skin cancer out. Awesome. Anybody else have anything you want to mention? This is a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, pray for my sister's husband. He's in the hospital having a surgery on his neck and stuff. So keep him in prayer. I'm just going to say this is an awful lot of people for not a lot of needs. But there's plenty of needs on the screen, and I know that there are more needs that are represented in this place tonight. I would cover your prayers for myself as well. I've been battling the crud for two weeks or so, and I'm about sick of it, so... If you wouldn't mind, just pray for me tonight also. Um, we need to continue to remember to pray for peace for Israel, for our missionaries in Ukraine, ac uh, access challenged nations everywhere, um, persecuted believers, and I don't think I can say that word, Brother Marty. Can you say it? Okay, maybe I could have said it. I don't know. Pakistan, <laughs> India, and Papua New Guinea. Did I say that right? Yep. All right. Um, remember our community. And our prodigals, remember that we always will need an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And remember Kenny Burns, who's struggling with cancer. Doug Seaball, who needs continued recovery. Sister Beulah, she's struggling in her health. She needs the Lord to touch her body. Remember Anthony Sifford, he needs complete healing of his swallowing function. The Lord has brought him so far. I believe he will get that back as well. And remember Darla uh, Crane tonight also as you pray for her precautionary treatments for cancer. We have a lot of things going on in the world that is around us, but we serve a mighty God who can touch every life and who can touch every need in this place tonight. If you need peace in your home, if you need peace in your own life, if you need strength, if you need deliverance, whatever it is that you need that you might have brought into this place, maybe it's something that you I can't even say out loud because it's just something that you wouldn't want anyone to know about. God wants to uh, touch that need for you tonight. So let's take these needs that you have mentioned and these needs that are on the screen and into the Lord's presence right now and just expect for Him to touch every life and every heart and every situation tonight. Lord, we worship you tonight, God. We thank you, God, that we can come into your house together, Lord, and that we can worship you in spirit and in truth, God. We pray right now, God, for every person who was mentioned who needs healing in their body tonight, God. I know that you took stripes for our healing, God, no matter if it was cancer, God, no matter if it's a cold, Lord, whatever it is, God, you can touch it, you can heal it, you can make our bodies whole, Lord. I pray right now, God, for every person who just might need some peace in their life tonight, God. Somebody who needs to feel your presence in this place tonight, God. They're just searching for something that they've never felt before, God. But maybe it's you, Lord, and, and they just don't even know it, God. But right now, I pray that you would give that person what they came into this place for, God. Or maybe something that they didn't expect to leave here with tonight, God. I pray right now. Lord, that you would just move, God, in our community, Lord. I pray, God, that you would just begin to draw people's hearts to you in this end time, God. I pray right now, Lord, for our country. I pray for all these other countries, Lord, all around the world, God, that need peace, God. They need you, God. They just need your presence, Lord. I pray right now that you would just protect 
God, those people that are your people all over the world, God, tonight. In the name of Jesus, God, I worship you, Lord. I pray, God, right now that you would touch every prodigal's heart tonight, God. I pray that you would pour out your spirit, God, like you said you would in these last days, Lord, on every person, God, that desires to have it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you would move in this service tonight, God there would not be one person who came to this place tonight, Lord, that would leave feeling depressed or leave feeling addicted, God, that they would be touched, that they would be delivered, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That they would just feel you, God, more than anything else, Lord. That there would be something that would be started in their life, God, that you will finish, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
feel his presence. It's awesome to have another opportunity to gather together to feel his presence in this place tonight. We're going to go ahead and dismiss into our classes. I think maybe everyone probably knows where to go, but youth will go out this door across the way to the other building. And if you're going to be in Celebrate Recovery tonight, we will be downstairs as we normally are. for a house full of people on a Wednesday night. Amen. Amen. My wife said to me this afternoon after people started telling us that they weren't going to be here due to sickness, she said, I guess there won't hardly be anybody at church tonight. If we ever get everybody here at the same time, it's going to be full, isn't it? Because God just sent us other people tonight in place of those who, who aren't here. And um, we thank God for each of you and um, thankful for Leo's son being in service with us tonight. Yes. We have several uh, new ones in the um, other building tonight in the kids department and the youth department. So we thank God uh, for all of that. Amen. I don't think I need this microphone. Can y'all hear me all right? Is that it? All right. All right. If you would turn in your Bibles tonight to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 is where we'll be reading from. It just feels awesome in the house of the Lord. And um, tonight's lesson will go right along uh, with what we're feeling here. You know, um, living for God is not meant to be just a routine or a ritual. Um, but it is meant to be a lifestyle that keeps us connected to God in a personal way each and every day. Of our lives, a lot of people um, would use the phrase "I had a come to Jesus moment." Anybody ever here have a come to Jesus moment? Yes, and sometimes people say that they're um, they're maybe being a little bit facetious or maybe not really meaning it in a way that that we mean it. But most of the time, they do mean that something got my attention and I realized that I needed to change my ways. I had a come to Jesus moment. Um, but we don't need to just come to Jesus. We need to stay with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you're going to do that, you're going to have to learn how to stay connected to him right. and have a personal relationship with him. So we're going to talk some about that over the next um, few weeks here in the month of November. Luke chapter 19, verse uh, 1 uh, says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with the man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him Fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day 
is salvation come to this house for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That is his very mission to save us. But as I uh, said at the outset here, being saved is not just a moment in time with God, but being saved is being connected to his presence um, and him abiding with us and us abiding in him. And so many people, they have a come to Jesus moment, uh, but it does not really affect uh, the rest of their lives. And uh, we need a change in us that affects us, our very decision making, our, um, our lifestyle all has to be affected by um, this relationship that we are able to have with God. Think of the privilege that we have to be able to have a relationship with God. I mean, the one who created everything. One that we are so far beneath and and so infinitesimal in comparison to because, you know, God uh, fills all space and time. He is everywhere at the same time. He is uh, so great and mighty, and yet right. he is mindful of us, and he loves us and desires to have a relationship with him. Most of the people that you're going to be around on a daily basis or that you're rubbing shoulders with right now, um, they are not connected to God. Right. And we all have the same opportunity. And I would describe it if you see that Wi-Fi signal there on the screen. That's trying to convey a message to you uh, through even the title slide tonight. That if we're not connected to God, it's not because he's not there. But it's because we're not on the same wavelength or on the same frequency right. to connect to him. So there's a lot of people walking around all day long, and you can be in the same place. God is everywhere. Paul said he is not far from any of us. In him we live and move and have our very being. And it's just like the uh, radio waves and the uh, wireless um, waves that are uh, coming from these microphones to the, uh, the, from the transmitter to the receiver, from the uh, sound booth up here. All these microphones are being operated because they are tuned in to a specific frequency that connects them, uh, connects the receiver to the transmitter. So we have to be on the same frequency. So we have to be seeking the Lord. We have to be uh, trying to find that frequency that connects us to his presence. And there's another definition of frequency too, isn't there? And that is how often that you do something. And so it's not just important that we learn what frequency God's on, but we need to um, make sure that we are, um, as a matter of our everyday, you know, what's on our to-do list, connecting with God has got to be a top, yes, the top priority. If I'm connected to God, everything else is going to flow from that connection. Right. Okay, if, if I'm connected to him, then, uh, you know, a, a boss I had when I worked in the poultry plant 30 years ago, um, I won't say it the way he said it because it wasn't very nice and, and I'd have to resign the church. But he basically said, if we start the day messed up, we're going to be messed up all day long. Only he used another term that was not very nice. It was very vulgar. But he would say, we can't start the day messed up. Right. If we're messed up now, it's going to be messed up from here on out. Right. Right. Are you following me? Yeah. And a lot of times we start our day messed up. Yes, sir. As like one fellow said, he said, Lord, he said, I thank you that I haven't yelled at my wife today. I haven't kicked the dog. I haven't said any cuss words. I haven't had a, I haven't had a, 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 a bad attitude about anything. But now I'm fixing to roll out of this bed. <laughs> and I'm going to need your help. Yes. We got to stop starting the day messed up. And the way we start the day out right is by connecting to God. You know, in the Old Testament, that scripture that says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity. It is like the oil. 
and gives the picture they would take the oil um, and they would pour it upon the head of the priest when he was anointed or upon uh, someone that was a king who was chosen for a specific task. They would take the horn of oil and they would tip it up and they would pour it on his head. And the scripture that there in Psalms gives us a picture of what unity is like. And he said, it is like the release of the anointing. Right. As it flows from the head, he said it flows from the head of the high priest down his beard and down all the way to the skirts of his garments. Right. That's what the Bible says. Right. And so unity is likened to a, um, a flow of God's presence. And so when I start today and I come into communion and into unity with God and his purpose for my life for that day, guess what happens? There's an anointing that flows. Amen. And that flow does just affect what's up here, but it affects everything that's in the path right. of the flow of the anointing. So we can leave the house and we can have all kinds of train wreck and, and, um, and situations throughout the day. And sometimes you're going to still have problems uh, during the day, but wouldn't it be better to be handling those things with a flow of the anointing on your right. life? And that's what we're talking about, being connected to God, being um, in that freshness of his presence so that we can address um, our lives and, and uh, minister to those around us. Zacchaeus shows us the picture of that person who is having the come to Jesus moment. And anybody who comes to Jesus, the Bible says that God will always respond to a broken and contrite spirit. God will never turn right. a person away that comes to him in humility and in faith. God responds to that. And so don't you ever listen to the lie of the enemy that says that, well, God's not interested in you or you failed too much or you have been too this or too that for God to want to be involved with you. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Right. God created all of us with that desire for fellowship uh, and communion with us. So he loves you as the crown jewel of his creation. Yes. So anybody that has that come to Jesus moment, and we've had a lot of people that have had come to Jesus moments in this building. Right. In fact, if they were all here tonight, we would have already had to uh, build a building three or four times this size. Right. We have baptized around 300 people in this building. Right. Did you know that over the last 20 years? We said, well, where are all they at? I don't know. Some of them were Job Corps students. Many of them were, and, and they're out there somewhere in the world living their lives. Right. Uh, there are people that have moved away. There are people who have fallen away from God. There's uh, people who have passed on to their reward. Um, but everyone has that opportunity to have a come to Jesus moment. Now, unfortunately, right. some of them aren't here because they had a come to Jesus moment, but they didn't adopt, they stayed with Jesus' lifestyle. Right. right. I'll never forget, uh, we had a guy, we just started the church here, and we was in a phase, we've probably been here two or three years, and um, a friend of mine told me, he said, if you don't, if you don't have something pulled together, a congregation forming by by five years, then you just need to dust yourself off and go on. He said, you're not going to build a church there. Well, I'm glad I didn't listen to him right. because uh, we didn't have good success until about year seven to tell the truth. Uh, but we was in that maybe year three, maybe year four, and uh, all the new had worn off. All the people that was just coming, you know, to see what was going on, they had all come through and gone. And uh, there was about 12 of us here and I was preaching. I, I remember standing right over here, and I actually got up on this pew, and I was preaching as hard as I could, and there was two people sitting right here, and they were both fast asleep. I was preaching right in front of them. Um, Twelve people, three of them were asleep. One of them was on the platform. And in that moment, I said, God, what, are, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? And then um, a guy came to church with his family. And the first time that he came, he came to the front for prayer. And uh, I went and, 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 mind you, we could not buy a guest with $5 bills. If we were standing at, if we were advertising, come to church, we'll give you $5. We couldn't have got anybody to come. I don't know what the problem was. But anyway, this family came. And um, the guy came to the front for prayer. 
And no sooner, as I, no sooner than I laid my hand on him, he fell out on the floor, flopped like a fish. And I thought, man, we got one. And I, didn't, I don't think I saw him two or three more times after that. And the, the, but there were other people that came and uh, didn't seem to really be all that interested or demonstrative in their worship. They did, But they just kept coming back and coming back. And you know what? Through those that stayed, we built a church. Right. Through those that stayed. So a lot of people have a come to Jesus moment. I always think about that guy. I'm like, I wonder whatever happened to him, you know? Because in, in my terrible judge of character and situations, I said, man, that guy, he's really, he's got it. He's going to really do it. Mm-hmm. And there's other people I've kind of in my mind said, oh, you know, right. they'll never be anything for God. They've got too many problems. And lo and behold, the one that you think won't make it, they'll make it every time. And the one that's got all the ability and the talent, they'll disappoint you just about every time. Right. You know, but I always think about that guy and I think about come to Jesus moments. They are important. And Zacchaeus had one. Zacchaeus found himself climbing up in a tree just for a chance to see Jesus. He was... Zacchaeus was a man that nobody wanted to be around because he was like what we would call a tax collector and he was kind of in a corrupt government position and, and uh, he just um, was not anybody's friend. When they saw him coming, they went the other way because he was coming to take something from them. But when Jesus got a hold of his heart, Jesus said, um, salvation has come to you as well. Right. We don't ever hear about Zacchaeus ever, ever again. I don't know if, if Zacchaeus just had a come to Jesus moment or if he was a lifelong disciple. I hope that he was a lifelong right. disciple. And I hope that so many that I have ministered to when I get to heaven, I'm going to see them. Perhaps they live yes, in another sir. state now. But I hope that they didn't just have a come to Jesus moment. Another young man, we had a service here. Nine people received the Holy Ghost in that service. And the evangelists asked people who had faith to believe for God to fill people with the Holy Ghost to uh, pair up with them and he said on the count of three I want you to lay your hand on their head and he said and when you do they're going to receive the Holy Ghost and this man was operating very much in the prophetic and we all believed what he said was going to happen you know it was just faith was in the building right. and I'll never forget I laid my hand on that young man and he instantly fell down on the floor and when I looked down he was already speaking in tongues as the spirit of God gave the utterance very talented young man that came to us through job corps ministry and, um, and, and I wonder what God has been able to do in his life. He right. later went into the military. He contacted me sometime later after he got back to the States and said, I've been away from God for a while, but I wanted you to know that uh, I'm going to church in Georgia. And he told me the church and, and shared some information with me. So I was excited um, about that. So if we are going to be those that do something long term for God, we're going to have to be those that adopt this as a lifestyle right. and not just as a moment in time that we bowed our knee, that we were baptized, that we repented of our sins. That we There's a lot of moments that we can look to. Yeah. But if you're going to be saved, Jesus said, He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. So... Um, Read for me uh, Luke 19, 8 through 10. Who has that? I, ha- I gave that scripture to somebody there, I believe. Okay, go ahead and read that out loud. Did I give that to anybody? Okay, go ahead. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I'll restore him fourfold. All right, so Zacchaeus, when he came that day to see Jesus, he did come with a purpose. He had something that he had a longing for. He might not have known how to describe it, but for some reason he was interested in in seeing Jesus. Something was missing, and when he heard about Jesus, something within him compelled him to seek the Lord. Uh, what are some of the things that you think compel people to seek the Lord? 
you could just draw from your own experience. What are some things that compel people to seek God? Desperation, Desperation all right. Trial. trial. A trial. The yeah, other desperate because of a trial situation. Sickness. Sickness. They've been diagnosed with some. It's, it's usually something that makes us realize that we are not in control. That causes us to seek the help of, quote, unquote, a higher power. And uh, I've heard a lot of testimonies of people that um, they came to know the Lord simply because one day they said, God, if you're real, right. if you're really up there. Now, they never inquired before, right? Mm -hmm. But they said, God, if you're, if you're real, then All get right. me out of this mess. Yes, sir. Uh, so there's a hunger within us. Perhaps it's loneliness that people are experiencing, problems in their life, trials, tests. Uh, things going on in their family, but it's usually something bad that gets us to looking sure. for the good Lord, right? It's right. usually something bad. Um, so Zacchaeus, for whatever reason, he had this hunger that propelled him to overcome whatever obstacles were in his way, in his mind. And, you know, obstacles for those who are coming to Jesus always present just enough challenge to require Effort on your part. So if you don't, if you're not willing to put forth an effort, um, you're not going to be saved against your will. You're not going to live for God against your will. It is going to require you to put forth an effort. Even yes. the demoniac of Gadara, who was possessed by three to five thousand demons, and we know that because the the uh, spokesman for those demons said, uh, the, "Our name is Legion." For we are many, and a legion in those days in the Roman army was a three to five thousand or six thousand men. So he had anywhere from three thousand to five or six thousand uh, demons that had possessed this man. And yet, whenever Jesus uh, stepped onto the shores of Gadara, what did that man do? He ran to Jesus. Right. Now, you would think that someone who was so possessed by the enemy, by the devil, uh, wouldn't have that ability, but even if your will is severely restricted by drugs, alcohol, um, depression, whatever it is, you still have a will. Right. And if you will exert some effort, you can get to God. Right. And um, you can't free yourself, but you can get to Jesus. And that's what this man did. Uh, those demons could not keep him from uh, running to the feet of Jesus and it wasn't long until he was clothed and in his right mind and his life was changed through uh, that moment. But we find later that uh, this man went and told all of his family and friends. And when Jesus came to Gadara the first time and cast out those demons, uh, he cast them into the swine. And what did the people do? They said, we're afraid of this man. We don't want you here. Leave. They rejected Jesus. Right. But this man went and shared his testimony. And whenever Jesus came back that, uh, to that same place later on, we find in Scripture that great things happened because of that man's witness. They were prepared then yes. uh, to uh, be able to receive the Lord. So we have to uh, uh, kick against our obstacles and, and put forth some effort, and God will meet us if we will do that. We can get connected to God because his signal is reaching out for us. Right. When, we, when we begin to try to sync up, there's no weakness on his part. We just got to get close enough to him that we can uh, get lined up with the signal and get connected to him. And that's what God desires uh, for all of us. So Zacchaeus... Um, Maybe he didn't realize that he was hungry for God. He just knew that he needed something that he didn't have. He may have been driven by guilt for the way he had been treating people. And, and maybe he was coming because he realized he needed to change. And he would heard that this Jesus was someone who could forgive sins. But whatever the obstacles, Zach just put forth the effort. He did what he could do. Now, you could say, well, what could he do? He couldn't see over the crowd. He was what, what the uh, Bible little uh, children's song says, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. And we emphasize the fact that he was a, a short little fellow. But the obstacle was he wanted to see Jesus, but there was a lot of 
people and things in his way, but he could climb. At some point, he learned how to climb a tree, and so he was able to get up just enough to be able to see over the crowd and see Jesus. And if you'll do what you can, great things will come out of that desire. What are some of the obstacles that um, hinder people from coming to Jesus? Shame. Shame, okay, that's a good one. Anybody else? Obstacles that keep people from coming to Jesus? Addictions. Addictions. Addictions, okay. Shame, addictions. Anybody else? Obstacles that hinder people from coming to Jesus. How about opinions of other people, especially if it's family? Yes, sir. The people that are closest to us can, can lock us down sometimes and keep us from getting to where we need to be. That's why Jesus said that if you're going to follow me, uh, you're going to have to hate your, your mother, hate your father. Uh, he right. used that word, and I don't think he meant it the way that we would take it, but he's saying, like, you've got to basically despise anything that would separate you from me because if you will allow anything to separate uh, you from me, from my presence, then the devil's going to exploit that. Right. He will find whatever button that he can push to put an obstacle in your way to keep you from coming to Jesus. Yes, sir. No matter the obstacles, people who are passionate to know Jesus push past those, and Jesus always honors their desire. That's why we are here. You are here because you have pushed past an obstacle. Maybe even tonight. There was a, something pulling on you or hindering you from even being in this service. But you're here because you pushed back and you made it in spite of the obstacle. And I can tell you tonight that Jesus is going to honor that. And he doesn't require you to be perfect. He doesn't require you to be, you don't have to be good to get God. You have to get God to get good. Right. And we understand that. This is a house of mercy and grace, and God is reaching yes, for each sir. of us tonight. No matter what's going on Amen. in our lives right now, God is reaching for us, and he wants to help us. Yes, we sir. see it over and over again in Amen. Scripture. Jesus called Zacchaeus by name and uh, said, I want to spend time with you. <laughs> Not just a casual meeting. He got to meet Jesus, but he wasn't expecting that Jesus was going to say, hey, I want to go to your house. Right. I want to be a part of your life. Right. That's what God wants. That's it. He wants to be a part of our lives. Amen. And scripture shows over and over again that Jesus responds when we seek him. Blind Bartimaeus shouted loudly, created a commotion to get Jesus' attention. The Bible says that Jesus stopped what he was doing right. and commanded him to be called. He allowed for there to be that Connection. A woman with the issue of blood pressed through the crowd to touch the hem of Jesus' robe. In every instance, Jesus always met the desperate person. And uh, Sister Jessica said that word um, that fits right there, desperation. Uh, desperation, I've preached about it many times. Desperation, uh, when it is um, uh, directed towards your hunger for God, will accomplish great things right some people when they're desperate they go the wrong direction desperation is is neutral desperation can lead you further into depravity into sin right. and and desperation can lead you to the savior it just depends on whether or not you couple it up with faith in him and desire uh, for change but every time that a person comes to him in desperation in humility god will respond Although our measures may not be as drastic as these examples I've used, cultivating our desire to draw uh, closer to Jesus always leads to a more intimate connection with him. Do you ever have a situation in your house where you've got uh, your wireless signal is in the house, but there's certain areas in the house that, you know, you kind of lose connection or it gets real weak and everything slows down to a crawl. And all that has to fix it is you have to you just have to move closer to the signal, right? Right. And when you're having trouble with your laptop because you you have it back in the back room in the house and your signal's on the other end, 
and you're trying to do something that keeps disconnecting, what do you do? You take your laptop and you, you take it over to close to where the signal's at. Right. And that's what we need to do as people of God. We know the solution is to stay connected to Him. Right. But the further we get away from Him and the further we get into doing our own thing, the further we get from the right frequency, wavelength, signal, the more we push back His voice, the harder it is to hear Him, the harder it is to stay All connected. Right. But if we will draw nigh to him, the word of God tells us that he will draw nigh unto us. So Amen. I want to help you just to cultivate that desire. And um, I want to emphasize to you tonight that we, we need more than just good God moments. Come to Jesus moments. We need a stay with Jesus <coughs> commitment. Amen. We need a stay with Jesus <coughs> commitment. And the first thing I want to talk to you about in this series um, of ways that we can do that, stay connected to God or make our connection stronger. The first thing, and it's so vital, is we must develop a lifestyle of prayer. Yes, sir. Prayer is our primary means of with God. And as we embrace the opportunity to connect with him, he meets with us and responds to our time of speaking and listening to him. Uh, he gave us a model to use as a starting point. Read for me, Brother Steve, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 13. This is the model that Jesus gave us for staying connected. Not just a moment in his presence, but now staying connected to him. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. And they that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray for thy father, which is in secret, or pray to thy father, excuse me, which is in secret, and thy father, uh, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of right. before you ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I have eight minutes to teach you about prayer. Can you listen real close for eight minutes? All right. Prayer is not as difficult as we make it. Right. As Pentecostals, we have made prayer a performance, right. a competitive sport almost. You know, like I heard people with all these uh, things, the way you have to pray, you have to do it exactly this way, and, yeah, and then you sure. have a spiritual warfare praying, you got to do that a certain way, yeah. and if you don't, then that's a failure, and you got to go back and figure out what you did wrong. Right. And um, um, I just don't see it like that. Prayer yeah, is sure. just me talking to God, just like I'm talking to Steve. Okay? The only difference in maybe the way that we're talking to one another and the way we would talk to God, it might be some differences that we see in this model, Jesus gave us, a, uh, gave us a model that shows us how to connect. You know, when you get that router and you get the, um, uh, you get the new internet and you get the router and it's got on the back, it's got uh, where you put the password in and, and it's got all the information that you need and it's got the instructions that show you how to, you got to press this button, you got to hold it for so many seconds and then it'll sync up. It, it gives you the instructions and Jesus gave us the instructions. Right. Okay. He told us how to connect to God. And he said, this is how you do it. The password is prayer. And when you pray, this is how you pray. You don't have to say these words, but you need to pray 
this model. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. And so he shows us our, um, our position and our approach to prayer in verses 5 through 7 should be uh, our position is as children approaching their father. So our attitude should be one of submission and humility, but also confidence. We come before the throne of grace with boldness. Why? Because our position is we are children of the one we're praying to. He is our father. He wants to give us good things. He wants to bless us. And so that's the first thing I would say. And then uh, he tells us how we should begin our time of prayer. He, he tells us exactly how to connect. Praise is God's address. Hallowed be thy name. We begin to worship him. We begin to lift up his name. And when you begin to praise God from your heart, there's going to be a connection with God. If people can't connect with God through praise and worship, if they've not been taught that, their churches are dead. There's no spirit. The reason why is because they're taught that you got, you're supposed to set their real respectful and not do anything. Let's be play quiet mouse, and then they're going to sing a couple songs. We're all going to take turns doing this and that and the other, and then we're going to go home. But, but they're not taught. So it's not because God is not available. It's because there's no liberty there because they don't know how to connect. Amen. How do we connect? We connect as children coming to their father, and then we, we begin to worship and praise and magnify the name of the Lord. And when we do that, the Bible tells us that God inhabits the praises of his people, and so there is going to be that connection. So we begin with praise and worship and thanksgiving, and, and then this tells us things that we, can, uh, we should ask for in our time of prayer. We should take care of any sin that's in our heart. We should uh, ask God for forgiveness. We should ask God for direction, for deliverance from the evil one. And, and basically everything that affects our lives, he covers in that. When he says, pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, I always say we should start with this little patch of earth right here. We're, right. we're all just, as my uncle used to say, Holy Ghost filled mud balls. Right. Right? We're... We were, we were made out of the dust of the earth, but we've been filled with the Spirit of God. And so as uh, Holy Ghost-filled people, uh, we need to pray, God, let your will be done in earth right. as it is in heaven. How is God's will done in heaven? Without resistance, without, without hesitation. Okay, God, let your will be done in my life mm -hmm. as it is in heaven. So then when you pray yeah. for yourself, you start praying outward that circle around you, your family, your friends, your loved one, your church, your community, your, your county, your state, your nation, your world, okay? And, and you pray his kingdom come in all of these areas. We're instructed to ask for daily bread. Daily bread. That means it, it should be something that we do often. Give us what we need for today. Sufficient is uh, the, the uh, trouble of one day is, is sufficient for that day. Don't worry about tomorrow, but say, God, what do I need to walk with you today? Because I'm going to stay connected with you. I'm going to hear your voice again tomorrow. But, but today, I'm, I'm fixing to roll out of this bed, and i got to face the world. Now, I've been really good up to this point while I was sleeping, but God, now I need you. I need to be connected mm -hmm. to you. So prayer is communicating with God. It has to be a lifestyle. We need to take the mystery out of it. I think you would pray a lot more if you realized when you were praying. Because to us, a lot of times, I have to be knelt down. I have to, it has to be a dedicated time. Oh, no. David said, seven times a day do I praise you. Okay? And David had times that he stopped what he was doing and just had a moment with the Lord. And we need to be that way. We need to be connected to God all day long. And, um, and we can have other things going on. It doesn't have to be super spiritual all the time. But we can stay connected to God to where in just a moment we're, we're back in his presence. And we're connected with him as we should be. Prayer is communicating with God. But it is, um, it is a two-way street. And we forget that a lot of times. We pray with faith and we expect God to communicate back to us, not just uh, us communicate to him. So if we're believing that God's going to give us an answer, 
then we should take time and listen for the answer. And we're going to talk about that uh, some in uh, next week's lesson. So I've told you how we should begin our prayer. Our posture should be of submission. We need to pray for God's will to be done. I said all that. Um, when we ask God for forgiveness, we must be willing to forgive others. And remember that forgiveness is nothing more than release. It's not justifying what that person did to you. It's not saying that that was okay. It's just saying that's not my problem anymore. I release it into the hands of my father, and he will handle it however he sees fit. He's taking care of me, and he will take care of that situation. It's not my thing to lose sleep over anymore. So it's release. Okay. A lot of people misunderstand that. They think that forgiveness means I have to have a relationship with that person. I have to put myself back in that situation of danger or what have you. doesn't mean that at all. It simply means the debt, as far as I'm considered, the debt's canceled. They don't owe me anything. Amen. I'm not worried about it anymore. I'm living my life unto That's God, good. and I'm not going to be bound by my past. So we have to forget right. those things that are behind, right. and we have to press on. So um, you can offer forgiveness. That does not... Save the other person. Only God can truly forgive sins. They have to deal with God. And anybody who has, uh, who has dealt with their sin with God is okay by me. Okay? If they took it to him, then it's none of my business, even if it was something that they did against me. And we have to have a posture. I don't know why I'm saying this exactly but tonight, but we have to have a posture of forgiveness at all times. Yes, sir. Because the attitude that says, I'll forgive when they come to me and ask me to forgive them, it doesn't always work. Ask Stephen, because he was being stoned to death, right. and those people, when he blacked out, they were still throwing stones. So he didn't have an opportunity to forgive them once they came right. to, the, uh, to understand the error of their ways. Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's the very posture of God, and that should be our posture to simply say, I release it, I'm not going to hold on to it, I'm not going to hold a grudge, uh, I'm just going to go on, and uh, God's going to uh, take care of it. And so Stephen, while they were stoning him, he forgave them, right. said, lay not this sin to their charge. So we have to forgive, and we have to be willing to forgive ourselves and receive the forgiveness that God has for us. And when we get to the end of our prayer time, this is, this is everybody say every day, every day. Every day. And I encourage you to try it. There's not a person here that doesn't have 10 minutes in the day or 15 minutes or probably even 30 minutes because we live in a rural area, and that means even if it's no other time, you're driving your car back and forth up and down the highway to work and back so you're, you're, you have an opportunity to pray. Whenever you, have, when you, whenever you can find a time. When I was 15 years old, my prayer time was in the bathtub. That was the only room in the house that nobody else was in. So when I got in the bathtub, that's when I did my praying. I know that might be a little uh, TMI, too much information, but um, pray where you can. Right. Pray when you can, but pray. But pray, and when you pray, pray after that manner that we've uh, talked about there. Prayer is an exciting journey. It's not a chore. Right. Begin your day with it, even if it's just five minutes, even if it's just a Amen. few minutes here and there. Make sure that you uh, set aside a time to connect with God every day, and um, and that is the key to staying with Jesus, not just having a come to Jesus moment. Would you stand with me? Thank, thank you for being a part of this class tonight.